Okay, so uh, so far what we've done is we've classified polynomials. We've learned how to give them names according to their degrees um, and their how many terms. We've added, we've subtracted. Now today we multiply. So after after this lesson, you'll also be able to complete all the different exercises on the homework that we were doing yesterday. We were working on it yesterday. Technically, we had only gone over adding and subtracting, so that was like a little bit more than half the assignment. Uh, but now you'll have you'll have everything. So. What's a polynomial? What is a polynomial? <coughs> ¿Qué es lo que es polynomial? Many what? Yeah, good. One or more terms. A polynomial is one or more terms. So today, we're going to multiply one or more terms with one or more terms. But in order to do that, we're going to have to go one by one, multiplying term times term. So that's this first part. And it tells you how to multiply individual terms. Where is the multiplication going to occur? In the constants and the coefficients. I like the big numbers. Yeah. Five bucks. Uh, I'll hook you up. Four ninety nine. So. Um. <coughs> then, <coughs> excuse me. Um. When it comes to dealing with the variables, which are those ugly looking letter things, we're gonna add the exponents. And this is a very common source of confusion, especially once you mix it up with adding and subtracting. Everybody gets confused, but hopefully these first few examples are going to take care of that. Now, we want to give this a name. So, like, when we do this, we, we, like, we have something to reference it. Like, hey, what are you going to do next? And, you know, we want to give it a verb. So, I like to call this FOILING. Now, the acronym FOILING really only applies to when you're multiplying binomials. <coughs> What's a binomial? Two terms. So this really only works when you're multiplying binomial with binomial. But just so that we have something to refer, like something to call it, anytime we multiply polynomials, I'm going to call it boiling. Yes? Uh, I'll show you that too. The box method. You like the box method? So, um, <clears throat> but well, I, I'm just going to call it foiling. We're going to call it foiling. And foiling is an acronym and it has a meaning, but the meaning doesn't really mean much. I'm not going to really, that's what it means, first, outer, inner, last. I, I don't find it to be very helpful. So, um, as far as what it means, it's not as important as the fact of any time if we are going to multiply polynomials, let's just call it, give it a name, let's call it foiling. <clears throat> so, before we get into the fun that is foiling, let's do some comparing and contrasting. Because when you take a quiz, it's all going to get mixed in together, and we're going to make silly mistakes. Look at look at uh, both of these examples. They both have a pair of x squares, but on the first pair of x squares, what operation is being conducted? What are we doing to those two terms? We're adding them what we've already done. So the reason why I want you to compare and contrast is, well, look, when we're adding, we can only add if the, uh, not only the variables, but the exponents have to be the same, which luckily they are. But now when we add, what's the only number that gets added? The, the coefficient, the number in front, not the variables, not the exponents. What's the coefficients? Use your fingers. What's one plus one? Good. Two. Two of what? Two x squares. But now we throw in multiplying and everything just goes bonkers. Then we get confused because now when you multiply, this is the same x squares, but now we don't have a plus in the middle. We're not adding them. When you write two uh, terms next to each other in algebra, what are you being asked to do? Multiply, right? So now when you multiply, what the first page told you to do is to multiply the numbers in front. What does the first x squared have in front of it? A 1. What does the second x squared have in front of it? 
And what's one times one? One. But don't write this one because I'm about to erase it because it's about to be followed by uh, variables. But now, unlike when we added, <clears throat> when you multiply the variables, as long as they don't have to be the same, you can put together any. These, this was x squared and y squared. You would write x squared, y squared. So, like the, um, in order to multiply, the terms do not have to be like. But if the variables do match, if the variables are like, what are you allowed to do with the, um, with the exponents? We can add them. Two plus two. Or as the cool kids say, foe. And because that x to the fourth came afterwards, and then you can add the one. Wait, but I don't get it, though. That's still confusing. Like, how come on one of them you put x squared, but then on the other one you put x to the fourth? Okay. Well, think of it this way. On the second one, we were multiplying, right? Everybody agrees we're multiplying? Mm -hmm. Let's look individually at each term. I know each term says x squared, but can we rewrite an exponent using multiplication? When you're squaring a number, can you express that? Can you explain it using multiplication? What are you doing when you're squaring a number? You're multiplying it times itself. So yes, in this case, it would be x times x. So couldn't I say that this is the same thing as saying x, x times x, x? So now since you're just multiplying everything, there's you, you, you already had multiplication. And then within each term, you're also multiplying. What is x times x times x times x? How many x's are there? Four, hence x to the fourth. Whereas when you were adding them, yeah, we had xx and xx, but we're adding them. So this is more like saying, hey, how many xx's are there? Any questions there? Cool. All right. Here's another example to use for comparing and contrasting. Notice here we have the same three terms, and we want to simplify. The next unit, you know, to, more towards the end of January, beginning of February, we're going to introduce an equal sign, and then that's when we get into equations. And when we get into equations, that's when you're supposed to tell me, like, what x is, x equals, y equals, and we solve. But this first unit, there is no equal sign. These are just expressions. We want to simplify. In algebra, when you simplify, you're really just doing two things over and over again. You're getting rid of parentheses, and then you're combining like terms. Those are the two main ways that you simplify in algebra. But how you get rid of the parentheses depends on the operation that's being done. So when we look at the first one here, what's directly outside of the parentheses? Yeah, it's just though it's the plus, which then, as Elsie uh, just said, it's because there's a one outside. So those are the ones that we've done already. What are you going to do with this first one? Yeah, we're going to distribute, but we're only going to distribute a one, and what's anything times one? Itself. So I could just say the same thing as saying 2x plus x squared plus 3x. How many terms do we have in total? Three. And if you understood like terms from before, you should be fine. We just have to figure out, are any of these terms like? Yeah, the first and the last one are. The x squared just drops down as if it were caught. And then 2x and 3x is 5x. Whereas when you look at the next one, which you're, well, geez, this is the exact same thing. Well, no, it's not. Because what we got rid of was a plus sign. If you get rid of the plus sign, you get rid of the one, which means what's directly outside of the parentheses on the second example? is 2x. So we are still going to distribute, even if you didn't realize it. Here we distributed. We're going to do the same thing here. But now we got to distribute the 2x, which means you have to know the rules that were set forth here on the first page. Each time we multiply, we multiply the numbers in front. What's in front of the 2x? 
What's in front of the 2x? A 2. What's in front of the x squared? A 1. What's 2 times 1? So you do need to write a 2 in your mind. Remember that you wouldn't have to write as a 1, but you could have to write a 2. <clears throat> and then the second thing said, hey, well, now that I have matching variables, these are both x's, what can I do with the exponents? Adam, don't forget this x with a little imaginary 1 on top. So what's x, x, x? x to the third or x cubed? x. Then what is 2x times uh, 3x? Okay, well, you got the sixth part correct, but if it's x and x, then we should have facts. You know that those who are backwards is epod? <laughs> Any questions? So now that we hopefully understand the differences between adding and multiplying, let's start working on the multiplying side of things. That's what today's lesson is on. This first slide with multiplying is just dealing with multiplying monomials. Xavier, what's a monomial? Okay, that mono does mean one. One term. So this is just one term times one term. It's just working on those uh, those steps. So we multiply the numbers in front. What's 4 times 5? It is 20. And then x and x. Yeah. And x squared. Bam. No, x squared. It's x, x, not 2x. Okay, how about the next one? What is negative 2 times negative 7? For show. And then Roseline. How many X's do we have? Questions there? Beans. Uh oh. So now let's go on to a my uh, a monomial times a binomial. Which the good news is we've already done this. Not only did we do it once today, but we've been doing this uh, since Monday and last Friday. The difference is that when we were doing this before, the number on the outside, the monomial, was either just a one or a negative one. So either the numbers that you would multiply by would stay the same, or they would just change signs. But now we have a number other than 1 or negative 1, so we have to follow the rules for multiplication. Let's go to the first one. What is 2x times x? Emma says? Good, 2x squared. And then I mean C, 2x times 4? x times 4, not just 8, 8x plus. Notice that when you distribute, however many terms you started off with in the parentheses, that's how many terms you should end up with. I started off with two terms on the inside, I end up with two terms. <coughs> Dario, for the... The next one, what is negative b times negative b squared? Okay, well, hold on, hold on, one at a time. Positive b to the third, that's important, because negative times negative is positive. Yeah, man, plus ac. <coughs> Xavier, can you use that desk the way that the manufacturer intended? That's cool, man. Just put you put your uh, your legs under it, and then you'll be all set. You can do it. 
I believe in you, man. Okay, so good. Now, now we can work on that. So these are four different uh, expressions to distribute. I'll give you like a minute for each of us. Let's say like three or four minutes, and see if you can knock these out all on your own. And then I'll do them on the board. And then you look at your paper. And then you look at my board. And then you look at your paper. And then you look at my board. And we see if they match. Sorry. No point. Emma, you finished them all? Nice. I'll see you too. Who do you, who do you think finished first, you or Emma? You want to compare and see who got it right? Okay, so let's do these quick, and then afterwards, if uh, if there's any differences, if we have any discrepancies, we'll investigate and see why we are uh, why we differ. Uh, five times six is thirty b squared. Five b times eight is plus forty b. For number two, five times seven is thirty-five m. And then five times negative four is negative twenty. I like the enthusiasm; they're good. Uh, six times five is thirty ppm. Six times six is thirty-six. And then finally, eight m squared minus sixteen m. Oh, wow. Well, if you put an m times thirty-six, no, because six times six is just thirty-six. There's no m there. Nice. Progress. No, I'll see what it means. The batteries are not going to work. There, you got it. Okay. I think she just wants to be friends, Xavier. She would respect you more if you just turned around and faced the board. Good. That's not funny. Those are just facts. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Here we're multiplying binomial with binomial, which is really where FOIL gets its name from. But we're going to call any time we multiply polynomials, uh, we're going to call it FOILing. You're a flow. Oil spelled backwards is me off. <clears throat> so uh, instead of using the meaning of the acronym, that first outer inner last, 
I just like to think of foiling as repetitive distributing. It's like just distributing over and over again. Nick, what is the first term in the first parentheses? Good, so we're just going to get that H and distribute it to all the terms in the second parentheses. H times 6H is uh, 6H squared. Lies. H times negative 1 is negative H. And I have now exhausted the H. It's gone. See, I, you already used it. Now we're going to do the same thing, but with the two. It's just like if I had 10 different terms in the first parentheses, I would just distribute all 10 of them, taking turns. 2 times 6h is plus 12h, and then 2 times negative 1 is minus 2. <clears throat> Some, this, this won't guarantee that you'll get it right every time, but something you want to check, especially when these foils get big. Um, how many terms did, did we end up with? Four. Four. How many terms did we have in the first parentheses? Two. How many do we have in the second parentheses? What's two times two? That, 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 that's how you know how many you're going to end up with. Our very last problem that we're going to do today is going to be a three by three foil. What's three times three? Nine. Yeah, so when you remove those parentheses, you end up with nine terms. Now, another nice thing about foiling, there's something, again, it's not going to guarantee that you get it correct, but something to watch out for. As long as your original polynomials are in standard form, if you're going to have like terms, you won't always have like terms, but if you're going to have like terms, they should be in the middle. The 6h squared just drops. The negative 2 just drops. What is negative 8 plus 12h? 11h. Now, honestly, I, I don't really have a strong opinion on this. I'm not for it, against it. But I guess I have to acknowledge the existence of this because some kids swear by it that it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. So um, Another method for multiplying polynomials, especially when the polynomials get longer, some people like to use this called the box method. So here's the way the box method works. Is there a dance that goes with that too, or just you just snap it in there? We said that this was two terms by two terms, so let's create a grid that's two by two, also known as a box. Let's do a box. And it's going to be two rows and two columns. On the outside of the left side and on, and on the top, I'm going to write those uh, each binomial. So like the first binomial have an H and a 2. The second had a 6H and a negative 1. So everywhere we see an intersection, we multiply those two terms. What is 6h times h? 6h squared. Say, uh, h times negative 1 is negative h. 6h times 2 is 12h. And then 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And if you notice, we ended up the same four terms I ended up with here are in the box. Six H squared. Oh, I forgot the method. I forgot my score. Sorry. Six H squared. Six H squared. Negative H. Negative H. Twelve H. Twelve H. Negative two. Negative two. Same four terms. If you prefer, be my guest. You know. You, you like the box, Elsie? Cool. The box likes you too. Now you guys do these two. Or else you have to answer to hope. Oh gosh. You don't want that. Still make you do it. Yeah, I think you're gonna have to do that. Okay. 
You can do it on one hand. Oh. And this is cool. And the second one. And the second one. Wow, nice. That one. That one. Have you ever done 200 push-ups while, while pointing? Because you can't do pull-ups or push-ups with a foil. So that's good. Yeah. Hey, that was food revenge on Emma. That's what you need. I'm just saying that. My favorite is a natural disaster. Oh my. Miami. Oh, Right? In Miami, I would need a gig. Just to show you that. Because you were one of the most popular kids around. Like, Popular, but not that popular. People travel from many, many miles. <coughs> so, uh, what's uh, 2K times 3K? So, uh, 6K squared. X, what's our 2K times 10? Good. Uh, zero, what's um, what's negative 1 times 3K? Negative 3K. Negative 3K. And then fine, look, uh, just so that you understand what I'm doing, I did 2K times 3K, 2K times 10, no more 2K. That would be 2K. Then negative 1 times 3K is minus 3K. And then finally, Diana, what is negative 1 times 10? Show us. Well, you didn't get it right yet because we're not done. We still have like terms. We have to combine them like they do in the hood. Six K squared plus seventeen K minus ten. That's what she does with friends. Nick, uh, oh, any questions on the first one? So Nick, what is P times uh, negative P on the second one? I'll see, I'll do the box with you, like, on the one we compare the ones, but I'm not going to do the box every time. Yes. If you're adding them, but then now I'm multiplying them. Remember, so when you multiply, you multiply the numbers in front. One times negative one is negative one, which is why you have the negative in front. And then P times P is PP, or P squared. Taiwan, P times negative three. Negative 3p squared. Lana, 7 times negative p. AJ, 7 times uh, negative 3. Do you know that JJ is spelled backwards as JJ? Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. It is. I haven't lost two hearts. <laughs> Relax. Come back.
defining like terms again? What? How, how do I combine like terms? So the, there's four terms, and the ones that have the same variable and the same exponent are these two. So the b squared drops, no, oh, I combine them, I add them. So negative and negative is even more, when you're adding them, it's even more negative. And you, so you keep the negative, and then three plus seven, if you use your figures, it's 10. Do you know? Do you know what you call a word that is spelled the same way forwards and backwards? Well, race car is a, a type of it, yes. But do you know what you call it? It's called a palindrome. Only when I'm not thinking about algebra. Okay, here we're multiplying a binomial times a trinomial. Notice how the person who created this presentation, this is not me, decided that we should use Elsie's method to bar class. I'll do it for this one. This will be the last one. It doesn't matter. Elsie wants it, so what Elsie wants, Elsie gets most of the time. I'll do both, though. I'll do both ways. But what I would like to ask you first, how many terms should I end up with when I remove the parentheses? Five. Four. Six. Why six? Two times three. Good. Two terms times three terms is you six terms. So first, let's use the forming slash distributing method, which is first term in the first parentheses is x, and let's exhaust the x. Let's multiply it times every term in the other parentheses. X times X squared is X to the third. X times negative X is negative X squared. X times 6 plus 6X. Six then goodbye, X. No mass X. For sure. Oh, no, 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 no. <coughs> then we're going to do the same thing with the next term, with the 5. Multiply the 5 times every term in the other parentheses. 5 times uh, x squared is plus 5x squared. 5 times negative x is minus 5x. 5 times 6 is 30. Uh, I'm not sure if I advocate this or not because I'm just adding more to it and you guys do better with less than you do with more. But if, if you do understand this, I had a student last period that was doing this. Some people find it helps them, so I'm fine with it which is when they're removing the parentheses, instead of just writing all the terms lined up, and you will agree, how many terms do we end up with? Six. They line them up into columns so that the like terms are directly above and below each other. You don't have to do it that way, but if you feel that helps, The x to the third has nobody to play with, so it just drops. Isaac, what's negative x squared plus 5x squared? Good. Plus 4x squared. Um, Cassandra. 6x minus 5x? What's 6 minus 5? And then the x's stay the same, and 1x is just plus 2x. <clears throat> when you combine, you keep the variables the same. Emma, you gotta quit being so interesting, man. He's got, you've got all his attention. Mm. Not, not, not everyone. Look at it. It's like hypnotizing at the store, at the clock store. Um, in clock milk. And then just drop down to 30. OK, 
Okay, no questions? Okay, now you guys do this one. Another two by three foil. I'll give you like 90 seconds. Okay, it'll be like a kafu. Okay, I have the clock there. I can just stare at it. Hmm? Yeah. You got it, Lana? Or you have a question? Okay. Let's just do it together. At me, see? You finished? Dave, you finished. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, when, uh, how many terms should we end up with when we remove the parentheses? Six. So whether you use the box method. Oh, wait, you know what? I said I was going to use the box method, didn't I? And I, I never did it. All right, I'll do it on this one then. I'll do it on this one. Uh, well, the, uh, the sixth term should be 8x to the third minus 20x squared plus 12x plus 18x squared. Minus 45x plus 27. That's what you should have on your paper. And my belated shout out to Elsie. Oh, I should have done this in the last one, brother. Do another one. If you were if you were to use the box method, 4x and 9 is my binomial, and then hope says that uh, the trinomial is 2x squared minus 5x plus 3. Everywhere that two terms intersect, you multiply them. So you still get 8x to the third minus 20x plus 12x. And then 18x squared minus 5x plus 27. If your tastes are right, what can I suggest? I like terms that are diagonal from each other. So we, we st regardless of which way you do it, you still end up with six terms. And then once you combine the ones that are like, the 8x to the third is by itself. Hope, 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 hope. Uh, 18 or negative 20 is minus 2x squared when I combine squares. Positive 12 minus 45 is negative 33x, and then finally 27 also is 12. Does anybody other than Elsie prefer the box method? Just to know. You like box too? Cool. And then finally, no, it's a three by three foil. So how many terms should we end up with? Nine. Go, do it, do it, do it. Still got time, do it. See if you can get it right. This would be the hardest thing you wish that you should see on Friday's uh, quiz. If you can do this, you can do anything. If you believe you can achieve what? I don't know. I guess we'll find out on Friday.
In the meantime, you can prepare by working on your homework. Did anybody actually work on it at home since yesterday? Taiwan did? No. David's going to have a study day with all the ladies. Good. She doesn't like you in that way. An error has occurred. Yeah, I I'm know. unable to answer your question. See? Try again later. Hmm? An off brand Lexus? I don't understand what you're saying. Dave, are you finished? Twenty-five percent of the time, you finish every time. Okay, so the uh, okay, 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 it's fine. I ain't even trying to learn this, man. No, just. Everyone, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. No! 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 No, 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 no. Um, I'll be giving me your paper and see if you got it right. Okay, so even though it might have taken you a while, if you look down at your paper and then you look at my screen, after the first step, I'm not done yet, but after the first step, we should have the same terms. We said there was going to be nine terms. I have written nine terms on my board. Check your terms, check my terms, check our terms. Does anybody have anything different than you, you need me to be like, oh, wait, mister, I don't know how you got negative 12. So then when we combine the like terms, the first one is going to be the uh, 6y to the fourth. It's lonely. What is the loneliest number? Uh, how many y to the thirds do we have? How many y to the thirds do we have? Yeah, there's two of them. So when I combine them, negative 3 and negative 12 is negative 15 by the third. The y squares, how many y squares do I have? Three of them. Don't forget, this is a very common mistake. People forget what's in front of the first y squared. A 1. So 1 plus 6 is 7, plus 30 is 37 y squared. Then negative 2 and negative 15 is negative 17 y. Plus 5 just drops. Beats. 